there are disciples of Baal in America. There are actually people who are carrying out what is known in the scripture as Baal worship, and many of our people just simply do not know what Baal worship is, so they don't understand it or recognize it when they see it. And I'll liken this to knowing or understanding or seeing disease. Almost everyone in America knows that we have such a disease as cancer. In fact, cancer is manifest in a number of different ways. But I would venture to guess that there's one in this church audience who could look at a person and say, well, that person has cancer. Not because they're without intelligence, and not because cancer doesn't exist, but because the symptoms are so different and, generally speaking, are unknown to the average layperson. The same thing happens to be true of Baal worship. Our people are so ignorant of the historical books of the Bible that tell us what Baal worship is that Baal worship actually exists right in front of us in our nation and people don't know what's going on. So I want to define what Baal worship is, and I think first of all we'll define it the other way around by defining what is a Christian. Then it might be a little easier for us to recognize the disciples of Baal. The word Christian is used only three times in our Bible. In Acts 26, Paul is preaching to the king, to King Agrippa, and after he is preached for a while, King Agrippa says in verse 28 of Acts 26, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. So whatever King Agrippa would have become if he believed everything that Paul was preaching, apparently the name Christian fit it. It's also in 1 Peter chapter 4, and we'll start reading in verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you, on their part, in other words, on the people who are not believers, on their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if a man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So here is a partial description of what a Christian is, that the spirit and glory of God is on him. He's not a criminal. He's not a busybody. He's not a person who causes trouble among other people, and he glorifies God. All right, turn back to Acts 11. And this may be, and probably is, the best clue, or the best simple clue, as to what is a Christian. The first time the believers were called Christians, Acts 11, verse 26 says, And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So whatever a Christian is, he has to be a disciple first, because apparently, according to this simple statement of Acts 11, verse 26, that it was the disciples who were called Christians. So I think I'll give you the dictionary meaning of disciple, because the dictionary meaning for the word Christian actually isn't complete enough, because it says of Christian one who professes to believe in Christ or the religion of Christ. And I believe you will see as we go on here that there are many people who profess to believe in Christ who are actually not disciples of Christ. But in many cases they are actually disciples of Baal. So the discipleship will be an easier way for us to understand who are the disciples of Baal and who are the disciples of Christ. The dictionary meaning of disciple is quite long, but I'll paraphrase it just briefly this way. One who believes in a teacher of a doctrine and obeys his doctrine and helps in the spreading of his doctrine. So there are three parts to the discipleship, not just a case of professing believership, but also actually obedience to the doctrine of that teacher, whatever teacher he follows, and also the helping in the spreading of it. Now some of you I know have been a little confused by watching professing Christians who say they believe in the doctrines of Christ, 
but they don't obey them and they don't help spread them. Well, perhaps it's because they are actually spreading some other doctrine of some other teacher or some other god. So let's go back now and follow in the Bible to some extent what Baal worship is. And uh, we'll not use all of the terms, but you might want to write these down if you're taking notes. There are six names used in the Old Testament and the New Testament for Baal. And the one, of course, is Baal. Another one is Baalim, B-A-A-L-I-M. And wherever you find that in the Old Testament, it's translated from the same Hebrew word. It could just as well have been translated Baal. Also, Molech and Moloch, M-O-L-O-C-H, Malchem and Milcom. And the reason those are used is they are Moabite or Ammonite names of Baal. They actually mean Baal, but they're put there in a transliteration of the Moabite or Ammonite name rather than the Baal. Turn with me to Numbers 22, because that happens to be the first time that the word Baal is used in the Bible, and I think you'll agree with me that it's very, very significant as to what was going on when that word was used the first time. You recall the chapter, this is where Balak, the king of the Moabites, had hired Balaam, who was apparently a priest of Baal, to curse Israel. Verse 5, He sent messengers therefore unto Balaam, the son of Beor of Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. Balaam apparently had a reputation of having some sort of power to curse people or to bless them. And this man, this king of the Moabites, called him and apparently offered him pay in order to curse the children of Israel. And at that point, we read in verse 41, It came to pass on the morrow that Balak took Balaam and brought him up into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the utmost part of the people. He took this priest, or whatever he was, up into the place where Baal was worshipped in order that he might see all of the house of Israel. In other words, to do what? To do two things. To spy upon the entire nation of Israel and to curse Israel. So the first time we find the word Baal used in the Bible is when someone was trying to destroy the children of Israel using the high places of Baal for that purpose. Numbers 25, you recall the uh, cursing that uh, Balaam did seemed to have no effect because every time he opened his mouth to speak, God made him say things that were blessings to the children of Israel. But in Numbers 25, we read that Israel abode in Shittim and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. This is the second time the word Baal is used in the Bible. The first time the enemies of Israel were attempting to curse Israel from the high or worship places of Baal. The next time we find Israel has actually began to intermarry with non-Israelites followed immediately by worshiping of Baal. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. This uh, sexual intercourse with non-Israelites, and that is part of Baal worship, and it's verified as to what it is in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14. Jesus Christ is recorded as saying, But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So the one thing that Balak and Balaam were successful in was to get Israel to sacrifice unto idols 
and to commit fornication. The fornication described in Numbers 25, of course, is interracial marriage. So we see that the first time that Baal worship, or the disciples of Baal, the followers of Baal, worked against the children of Israel, they accomplished three things. They caused them to commit interracial marriage, to marry outside the race of Israel, and of course they used Baal worship to spy on Israel and attempt to curse Israel. So whatever it is, the first time we read it in the Bible, it is against the children of Israel. That's the first manifestation of Baal worship in the Bible. Enemies of the children of Israel. Turn to the second chapter of Judges. And Israel is now in Canaan land and Joshua has died. And of course the book of Judges is the story of Israel turning away to Baal worship and then being punished. Judges 2 and verse 11, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. This is the same Hebrew word translated Baal, so it means Baal. Verse 12, And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. So you'll see, Baal worship is also a multiplicity of gods. It's not just one god, it's a multiplicity of gods. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. In Judges 10, in another one of their turnings against the Lord after they had been sent into captivity and then saved out of captivity, Verse 6, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam and Ashtaroth, and the gods of Syria, and the gods of Zidon, and the gods of Moab, and the gods of the children of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines, and forsook the Lord, and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines, and into the hands of the children of Ammon. You notice? God's punishment was to actually sell the children of Israel into the hands of the people who were the Baal worshippers. You'd think, well, he'd try and get them away from there. No, God's punishment was actually to give them into the hands of those people who worship Baal and worship these other gods. Now, this includes the worship of Ashtaroth, and I'm not going to go into that. We'll discuss that further at some other time. Because most of you do know that our so-called religious festival of Easter actually comes from Ashtaroth. It is the worship of the wife of the god of Baal. That's who Ashtaroth was. I want to read in Haley's Bible Handbook a description of what the men have found the Christian men and the people who have gone to old Canaan land and have excavated the ruins over there and from their excavations, coupled with what they know the Bible says about Baal worship, I want to read you what Haley says actually went on and was carried out by the disciples of Baal. And I'm sorry I have to read some of these things, but I believe that God's people in America are going to have to recognize this because they'll be deceived into thinking that many of these things are trappings of our religion when in fact they are not. On page 166 of Haley's Bible Handbook under Religion of the Canaanites, and for those who have Haley's, there have been many reprints of this, and this may be on a different page in your Haley's Handbook. Religion of the Canaanites. Baal was their principal god, Ashtaroth, Baal's wife, their principal goddess. She was the per personification of the reproductive principle in nature. Ishtar was her Babylonian name, Astart, her Greek name, and Roman name. And the Astart, of course, is where we get the word Easter. Ba Baalim, the plural of Baal, were images of Baal. Ashtaroth was the plural of Ashtoreth. Asherah was a sacred pole, cone of stone, or a tree trunk representing the goddess. Now, some of you know what the maypole is. Well, the dancing around the maypole on May 1st is actually one of the things that they did over there. They had a pole and they danced around it in a circle. And uh, they do that all over the world. These ungodly people, they dance around a maypole. Temples of Baal and Ashtaroth were usually together. Priestesses were temple prostitutes. 
Sodomites were male temple prostitutes. The worship of Baal, Ashtaroth, and other Canaanite gods consisted in the most extravagant orgies. Their temples were centers of vice. Now, I'm talking about religious exercises. Now, many of you see these things in America, and you think, well, these people are just sinners. No, this was actually part of the religion of Canaan. They did these things as a religious exercise. Archaeological notes. Canaanite religion. God's express command to Israel was to destroy or drive out the Canaanites. And Joshua went at the task in dead earnest, God himself helping with mighty miracles. In reality, God did it. In excavations at Gezer, McAllister of the Palestine Exploration Fund in 1909 found in the Canaanite stratum, which had preceded Israelite occupation of about 1500 B.C., the ruins of a high place, which had been a temple in which they worshipped their god Baal and their goddess Ashtoreth or Astart. It was an enclosure 150 by 120 feet surrounded by a wall open to the sky where the inhabitants held their religious festivals. Within the walls were ten rude stone pillars 5 to 11 feet high before which the sacrifices were offered. Under the debris in this high place, McAllister found great numbers of jars containing the remains of children who had been sacrificed to Baal. The whole area proved to be a cemetery for newborn babes. Now you probably realize what I'm getting at, and I'll go into this in more detail later. Most of us have been absolutely amazed to find how easily this nation had been converted from a nation that believed in the sanctity of life, and especially to have many children, to a nation that is now killing hundreds of thousands, now reaching into the millions of babies every year. And the religion of Baal included the murder of little children. It was not just something they did. It was a religious exercise. It was done in the name of the god Baal. Another horrible practice was what they called foundation sacrifices. When a house was to be built, a child would be sacrificed and its body built into the wall to bring good luck to the rest of the family. Many of these were found in Gezer. They have been also found at Megiddo, Jericho, and other places. Also in this high place under the rubbish, McAllister found enormous quantities of images and plaques of Ashtaroth with rudely exaggerated sex organs designed to foster sensual feelings. So, and then he concludes in this paragraph, Canaanites worshipped by immoral indulgence as a religious rite in the presence of their gods and then by murdering their firstborn children as a sacrifice to these same gods. Do you begin to see a glimpse of Baal worship in America? Our people don't know this. They, they fight and they say, oh, this is terrible, this is something, and you shouldn't do this, that this is murder. And they go about it to some extent on the basis of what they know is right and wrong, but they do not have the knowledge necessary to recognize we have a nation full of the disciples of Baal, and they are practicing their religion in this nation. He says, it seems that in a large measure the land of Canaan had become a sort of Sodom and Gomorrah on a national scale. And over on another page of archaeological note, Baal worship, the Oriental Institute excavating at Megiddo, which is near Samaria, found in the stratum of Ahab's time. Now this would be after Israel was in the land. What I read about there was what the Canaanites did. Now this is in Ahab's time, or after Israel was in the land. The ruins of a temple of Ashtaroth, goddess wife of Baal. Just a few steps from this temple was a cemetery where many jars were found containing remains of infants who had been sacrificed in this temple, one of which is shown, and there's a photograph here. Prophets of Baal and Ashtaroth were official murderers of little children. And over on the other page it said, that this sacrifice was by murdering their firstborn children as a sacrifice to these same gods. 
I know you have perhaps wondered this rather incongruous thing. We know that the enemies of the children of Israel would like to reduce the numbers of the children of Israel. And we see that they do this through their teaching and preaching of abortion, which has now become a tremendous thing in the land. Hundreds of thousands of young babies are killed. But at the same time, these same people are the ones who have promoted illicit and premarital sex. And that, of course, does what? That brings about pregnancies in women, and then they have an abortion, and what is that? That is the murder of the firstborn child. And the murder of the firstborn child is Baal worship. It's not just something that someone's doing. If these people just wanted to reduce the number of our race, they would try to get these young girls not to have premarital sexual re relations. But instead they urge them to do so, and our educational system and the movie industry and the entertainment industry is just full of these manifestations and trappings of Baal which lead millions of young girls to pregnancy and then they attempt to lead them to the doctors who then kill these young children. Turn to Second Kings 17. This is the chapter that tells of Israel being taken into the Assyrian captivity, ten tribe or northern house of Israel. And in this chapter is given the reason why God sent them into Assyria. And you listen as I read these reasons down through this chapter. Second Kings 17, in verse 6 it says, In the ninth year of Hosea, and Hosea was the king of Judah, the southern kingdom, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes. And then these are the reasons. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen. That means they did the things that the heathen believed in, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord. Do you live in a nation where people are doing things that are not right against the Lord? Multiplied hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions of people, and not just the people of the other races. I'm talking about our Israel people, Anglo-Saxon and kindred people, are actually doing these same things that we read about way back here. Verse 15, And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers. How many people in this land do you know who actually accept God's statutes and accept his covenant? He said of those Israel people, they were driven into captivity because they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them, and they followed vanity, and the old English word vanity means lies or false teachings, false doctrines, and became vain and went after the heathen that were round about them. They started intermarrying with the other people concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them, and they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven. That means they began to worship the stars, the sun, moon, and stars, and try to find out their future by reading the stars. And they worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. All of these things are part of the serving of Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. These are all of the things that Israel did in the old land which is called under the collective title of serving Baal. You remember, remember we read back there in Numbers 
that serving Baal was not just worshiping Baal, it was worshiping Baal and all of these other gods and all the gods of the Ammonites and the Moabites and the Philistines and so on. And God then, of course, verse 18, Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. And you know from the scripture that later on the tribe of Judah was taken into the Babylonian captivity for the same reason, because they had turned away from the Lord and served Baal. Now I want to read this list. I have 13 things here which we have already seen constitute Baal worship. There may be a few that I have missed, but I'm going to just list these, and then we'll discuss them in the light of present-day America. The first one we saw as a part of Baal worship was the spying on and the working against the children of Israel. Number two, interracial fornication. Number three, forsaking God. Number four, serving Ashtoreth. Number five, prostitution or illicit sex. Number six, homosexual practices. Number seven, the killing of babies, preferably the firstborn. Number eight, sexual images and pictures. Number nine, do things as the heathen. Do them the way the heathen would do. Number ten, do not obey the commandments of God. Number 11, worship the host of heaven. Number 12, cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. And number 13, use divination and enchantments. Our people are turning to learn all of the things of the heathen, to worship the host of heaven, and do all of these things that are listed here as part of Baal worship. Now I want to just run down this same list and uh, as I say, I'm giving the bad news today because by the time I go back down through this list again, I think you'll see with me that America has literally become a nation of Baal worshippers. Those 13 things do not constitute all of Baal worship, but they are a part of Baal worship. The first one, the spying on and working against the children of Israel. Almost the entire communist apparatus could be considered that much of Baal worship because they intend to destroy our nation and our people. Many, in fact, most of the upper echelon of our so-called political apparatus, as you must know, is doing everything that they can to hurt the United States of America. Are they doing it just because they hate us or are they actually worshipers of this religion that we find the first time it's mentioned in the Bible was used for the purpose of spying on and injuring the children of Israel. Many, many churches in America by their doctrines are destroying this people Israel. Almost every church in America tells us we're not the Israel people. I don't know of any doctrine that can destroy our people faster and more surely than by telling them they're not Israel telling them they're just another heathen people. And that goes along with this number nine down here, doing things as the heathen. If we're not Israel, then it is much easier to convince our people to do what? To do things as the heathen. Number two, this interracial fornication, the movies, television, the total government operation now, especially in the educational system, is being used to force to force our people to mix with the heathen. I read in the paper just yesterday or the day before a commendation in the newspaper for the Phoenix City government because they have done an exceptionally fine job of hiring minorities. Now you know what that means? That means non-Israel people. They are moving them into all sorts of jobs. They have preference in all welfare and now in all jobs in America. What is that doing? Well, of course, it's hurting our people and it's forcing the mixing of our people with them. Number three, forsaking God. I hardly need comment on that. We have taken God and the Bible out of practically everything that has to do with our people. With our educational system, it's reaching the point now where it may not be too long when they'll start putting people in jail if they so much as try to preach or teach anything out of the Bible in a public institution. Number four, the serving of Ashtaroth, 
And I could preach a whole sermon on that, and I will do that sometime before next Easter. The entire Easter festival which we have has all of the trappings of the old festivals they had over in Babylon and Egypt and Rome and ancient Greece when they had this spring festival for Ashtaroth. Number five, prostitution or illicit sex. I understand the Congress of the United States will soon legalize prostitution in Washington, D.C. That is on the books for being passed sometime in January or February. The capital of the United States of America will make it legal for prostitution any place in the capital of this nation. And, of course, it will spread across the land. Number six, homosexual practices. Some of the churches are already ordaining homosexuals as preachers. They are marrying homosexuals, and it will soon, we will soon have legislation which will make it a federal offense to refuse to hire a person because he is or is not a homosexual. Number seven, the killing of babies, preferably the firstborn. I've gone into this on the radio, and I won't cover it now, but you recognize that this is something that is coming upon our people in a way that is almost impossible to conceive. California alone, by uh, within a year from now, will probably reach a half a million children killed in one year, one state. I have some things that I want to just call your attention to. This is one of our own publications, which you have seen, the bringing in of Asiatic children to adopt them into America. Church publications which are promoting this. I have a long article from a Los Angeles newspaper, part of which says the cost of the abortion through the service is $350 exclusive of the airfare. The doctor receives $75, the hospital $250, and Planned Parenthood $25. You recall the article we printed on Planned Parenthood here in Phoenix? They have offices all over the nation, and the newspapers are urging pregnant teenagers to go down to Planned Parenthood for counseling. Well, what Planned Parenthood does is refer them to an abortionist, and the abortionist pays them a fee for every girl they send over to them. One uh, man in here, uh, a closer scrutiny of the reverend's motives. This is a minister who is running this one operation, might involve more than altruism. 12,000 patients a year at $25 a throw amount to $300,000 annually for Planned Parenthood clergy counseling. This minister, who is a counseling young girls, has in the last year sent 12,000 of them over to California for abortions, and he has gotten $25 for every one of those babies that they killed in California. These are ministers operating out of churches sending the girls to California. Here is a meeting of some doctors out in New York where they met for a uh, study on the uh, abortion. And this is reported in a book titled The Death Peddlers. And the author says, Listen to Dr. Irwin H. Kaiser, a pioneer in his field. And here's a quote of this doctor standing up before this large group of doctors. Part of what he said. At $160 per patient, this is a substantial money maker for the hospital. And obviously, if we were prepared to step into the competitive New York market where abortions go for as high as $1,500, we probably would make a substantial killing, if I may use that expression. And the editor of the book reported there was general laughter throughout the audience of the doctors. Remember what I read about Baal worship? The high priests of Baal were official murderers of little children. This was part of the religious ritual they went through in order to worship Baal. And here in the United States of America, and some of us are old enough to say, uh, 25 years ago if someone would have told me that this could have happened, I simply would not have believed it. In fact, it's almost impossible to believe now until you realize we are going back and doing the same thing our fathers did. We are worshiping Baal in the land. And a tremendous number of these so-called Christian churches 
are not churches of Christ. They're not disciples of Christ. They are disciples of Baal. Someone was telling me about one of their neighbors just recently, and I imagine this may be true all over the country. They apparently had listened to me on the radio talking about the eating of pork. Well, now the eating of pork is a violation of God's law. But it's not the great thing you might think about as some of the other violations. But the conversation led to the story that this man had gone to his minister to try to convince him that we shouldn't eat pork as a violation of God's law. The minister got highly upset and the conversation reached the point where the minister admitted to this man that he was in favor of abortion. Now the man never knew that. He never knew that that minister was in favor of abortion until he got in a rather heated conversation about pork. What was that minister? That minister was a secret disciple of Baal, standing in the Christian pulpit, deceiving people, not by promoting abortion from the pulpit, but by doing what? Promoting all of the rest of these things, among which is, do not obey the commandments of God. How many of you know of any church other than this one within about 25 or 30 miles of here that preaches we should obey the commandments of God? Well, one of the parts of Baal worship was to disobey the commandments of God, to cast them aside and put them away. All right, let's go on down the list in just a few minutes remaining here. Pornography or as Haley's Bible handbook said, they discovered, they unearthed these pornographic drawings back here in the temple of Baal. Our nation is literally flooded with pornography. And what are the churches doing about it? Practically nothing. And the movies, the television, and the magazines are reaching the point where if I understood Baal worship, I could walk in the drugstore and say, well, there are disciples of Baal in here. But we don't know that until we get into the Bible. Number nine, to do things as the heathen. I have a book I just recently purchased titled The Dispossessed Majority. It costs $7.95 a piece. We have several of them here. You can borrow them if you'd like to read them. The Dispossessed Majority. The man has written about a 500-page book showing that everything in America from the government to the educational system to the churches to economics is all being used for the benefit of the colored and for the destruction of the white. What is that? That's the first thing we read here of Baal worship. Spying on and working against the children of Israel, the household of God. All right. Number 10, do not obey the commandments of God. Almost all state and federal government laws that have enforced God's law in this nation are now being put away. Right down to the last one, the putting of murderers to death. And the churches, of course, have joined in this and have taught our people almost en masse that God's laws have been put away. Number 11, worshiping the host of heaven. I mentioned that astrology and all of these things are blooming in this land almost beyond belief, causing their sons and daughters to pass through the fire. Some of you saw this newspaper article, I imagine. This was from the Young People's Saturday edition of the Phoenix Gazette. Half the page is taken up with a picture of this girl. The headline says, Student says she's a child of Satan. The article is quite long, and it says about her, Sherry, a student at Cortez High, is also a professed witch and Satanist. And she says, God didn't fulfill me, said the co-ed, who tried Christianity and atheism before turning to devil worship two and a half years ago. Christianity preaches happiness after death, but Satan tells us we can have happiness in this life as well as after death. She says a little further on, I don't fear death because I know when I die, I will have Satan's protection as one of the rulers of hell. The article ends up by saying, though Sherry converted to Satanism, her parents are still devout Christians and strongly disapprove of her religion. They still make me to go to church on Sunday, she said, but they can't make me think the way they want me to. I go to keep peace in the family. 
Marriage is a perfectly legal in the satanic church, and Sherry plans to marry a warlock. She says they'll bring up the children in Satanism. Now, before you condemn this young girl, I'd like to ask you, where did she learn that there were people living forever and ever under the control of Satan in hell? She learned it in this same Christian church where her parents still go. In other words, where did she learn the doctrines of Satanism? She learned them back in that Christian church that her parents made her attend. You think she was converted to Satanism outside the church? Nonsense. She was converted to be a witch and a Satanist inside what is called a Christian church by the preachings of hell. I have before me an article, a pamphlet titled, Hell, What the Bible Says About It. The author is John R. Rice, who is the most prolific author I believe the Baptists have ever produced. He has written hundreds and hundreds of books. His books are distributed by the millions, and he is a Baptist, and every Baptist church in America distributes them. I assume the Baptists approve his story about what's in hell. Now, you remember that girl said she's not afraid of death because she's going to be a ruler in hell. You listen to what John R. Rice says about hell, which apparently is official Baptist teaching. Is God fair to keep a man forever in hell for the sins of his life? That is an intelligent question, and there is an intelligent answer. The reason is sinners must stay in hell is because they are sinners still. Hell is not only a place of punishment for sin, it is a place where sin continues. He goes on further, In fact, there is every reason to believe that in hell there will be an abandonment to wickedness such as is not possible on this earth. Where did that girl get the idea that she could live in hell and commit sexual fornications while she was there? She got it from the Baptist church. What is the Baptist church? I'll tell you what it is. It's a church of Baal worship. No wonder the next generation is turning to Baal. They're taught the doctrines of Baal in the church. Their parents require them to go because they think they're going there to learn about Christ. Do we have disciples of Baal in America? Brother, sister, this nation is full of them. Just as Christ warned us, that they would come in the name of Christ and would deceive many. Let me read his last, the last of John R. Rice here. Can you see why sinners who reject Christ deliberately choose evil instead of good, and then when they go to hell continue in sin? Can you see why they should continue to be punished? Sinners in hell make their own hell. People go to hell because they deserve it. They stay there for the same reason. Punishment continues because sin continues in hell. Well, praise the Lord, there's coming an end to this. I have a question for you, and I'm going to ask this next week. At the end of the sermon next week, are you a disciple of Christ, or are you following Baal? Let's close in Second John 8 through 11. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whoso transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If these people are not teaching the truth of the Scripture, they are not Christians. I don't care what they put under their churches or on their name, or their letterhead. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, not the doctrine of Christ, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed, for he that biddeth him God speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. And this is the result of evil teachings. Our young children turning to Satanism. God help us. Let's all stand. Our Father and our God, we pray for these days of darkness to soon be over. Lord God, help us to stand, to read thy word, to believe it, to understand it, to see that there shall be an end of these things when you...